The planning stages of Kamen Rider Double began in 2008, while Kamen Rider Kiva was airing in Japan. The series was supposed to air immediately after Kiva, but instead, Toei wanted to celebrate the 10th Heisei Kamen Rider series and produced Kamen Rider Decade, which postponed Double's production. It's worth noting that planning for Kamen Rider Double was completed before Kamen Rider Decade. Up until Decade, every entry in the Heisei Kamen Rider series ran for a whole year and aired alongside the Super Sentai series, premiering around January or February and ending the following year around January or February. However, Kamen Rider Decade only had 31 episodes as opposed to a number closer to 50 episodes, thus ending right before the fall season. The reason for the short episode count was to offset the Super Sentai and Kamen Rider toy releases moving forward. Kamen Rider Double premiered a week after Decade's finale, on September 6, 2009. Kamen Rider Double is produced by Hideaki Tsukada and written by Riku Sanjo. The pair worked together previously on Super Sentai shows like Maji Ranger and Geki Ranger. Before becoming the head writer for Double, Sanjo specialized in the field of toy designing and helped Tsukada in the past create toys that would fit into the Sentai story. During the initial production stages of Double, Tsukada posed a question to people on staff. What originally made a Kamen Rider? We discussed the question together. One of the answers we came up with was that both the Kamen Rider and the enemy utilize the same power created by human technology. This idea was something very typical of the series author Shotaro Ishinomori. Making the villains of the series an evil family was something that Tsukada wanted to do from the very beginning. Designer Masato Hayase, the person who created Kamen Rider Double's design, had a different answer to that question. When asked the question, what originally made a Kamen Rider, he answered, there's a lot of things that make up a rider, one of them being a scarf. Not everyone was on board with giving a scarf to Kamen Rider Double. The last time any Kamen Rider had a scarf was Kamen Rider Z-Cross who appeared in 1984's TV special, Birth of the Tenth, Kamen Riders All Together. The scarf became known as an accessory for characters that parody transforming heroes. And because of that, production staff were hesitant to bring back the scarf. Kamen Rider Double's primary form is Cyclone Joker, whose colors are green and black, but before Cyclone Joker was chosen as Double's primary form, people in the development team felt that other forms, such as Heat Metal, a red and gray color scheme that kids are already familiar with, would better suit the primary form. Hayase, however, was confident in choosing Cyclone Joker as Double's primary form because its color schemes pay tribute to the Showa-era riders. To me, the standard of Kamen Rider's colors are number one's green and the black color scheme of Kamen Rider Black. And because Double has a half and half color scheme, he's like the Double Riders. I believe the only thing that can be Decade, who can transform into other riders, is with Double Riders. For example, V3 succeeded number one and number two, and the design of the Double Typhoon, with its technique and powers, would make you think of the Double Riders. With the color green and black, we can do just the same. Hayase explained. The theme of the series is Hard Boiled Detective, Another theme that Tsukada always wanted to do. With this in mind, Sanjo thought up toy ideas during a meeting and suggested that Kamen Rider Double transform with USBs, an item that recent spy movies have been featuring. Even as a transformation item, they were something adults tended to carry and not something children would typically have. It is precisely because children wouldn't normally use them is what made the toy team decide on memory sticks. Double utilizes two memories at one time. One side represents a noun and the other would modify that noun. If both sides were nouns, such as a gun and a sword, you'd have to come up with many kinds of attacks or it wouldn't be interesting. That's why I wanted a system with one side being an ability and the other enhancing that ability. In Kamen Rider Double, the Cyclone, Wind, Heat, Flames, and Luna, Mutability, memories are the enhancements. On the other side, we have the Joker memory for a fist fighter, the metal memory for a staff wielder, and the trigger memory for a shooter. For enemies weak to fire, the heat memory can be used with the metal memory for a fiery staff or the trigger memory for flame bullets. The memories can be changed around to best suit the situation, Sanjo said in weekly comic Big Spirits issue 44, 2017. Originally, there was only supposed to be a single user that transforms into double, but the design itself had two colors with a clear divide between the two sides. TV Asahi wanted a really good reason why the design had a divide in the center, which led to Tsukada and Sanjo altering the original plan of having only a single user. They decided to play off the hard-boiled detective theme that they were working with, and have the detective transform with his partner, making the first Kamen Rider that requires two people to transform. As for the secondary Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider Axel, the suit design is themed after a bike, which begged the question, what kind of bike would a bike-themed Kamen Rider ride? When we were deciding on what to do with the second rider's bike, 
Sakata watched Terminator 4, which was in theaters at the time. He told us there was a motorcycle Terminator in the movie, and suggested, why not just have him turn into a motorcycle, Sanjo said, in Futo P.I. Volume 3. The bike that Terui rides himself is actually owned by staff member Ishimori Productions' Hideki Tajima, whose bike just happened to be the right red for the series. The reason why Terui rides a bike as opposed to a police-issued vehicle is because the production team thought it didn't match his personality. Similar to Double, Axel's backstory is inspired by Showa-era Kamen Rider, Kamen Rider V3, both having lost their parents and little sister to a villain. Every case in Kamen Rider Double is structured into two episodes, for the majority of the arcs, the first episode introduces the clients and the dopant, and the following episode features double protecting their client from said dopant. The latter episode of every case begins with the character correlation chart, which was created by Tsukata himself. He was very meticulous when it came to creating these charts. For example, in an early episode where the Smilodon dopant attacks Philip, it was marked assault question mark on the correlation chart, which foreshadowed the relationship between Philip and Mick the cat. The reason for this being that the Smilodon Dopant was Mick, Philip's cat, transformed into the Dopant. The explanation is that Mick wasn't attacking Philip, but rather playing with his owner. However, it's not revealed that Philip is Mick's owner until the later part of the series, so no one would understand the reason for the question mark until then, Sanjo revealed. At the end of every case, Shotaro writes his reports on them in the typewriter. Fun fact about the desk, this desk was actually pulled from Toei's warehouse, it was previously used in detective stories, an old show from the late 70s produced by Toei. Shotaro actually shares a noticeable resemblance with the show's main character, Shunsaku Kudo. The finale of Kamen Rider Double is a nod to detective story. In Double's finale, Shotaro has an argument with the pet shop owner and is later shot by him. Likewise, in detective story's finale, Kudo has an argument with a supermarket clerk and is then stabbed by him in the end. The scenes at the Narumi detective agency were planned to be comical from the start. Tsukata originally intended to have a comedy duo, character Shotaro and Philip, to be at the center of comedy, but then added a third character, Akiko, and then later, Terui. Together, they formed a pseudo-family, a warm and caring one, a contrast to the Sonozaki family, the main antagonist of the series. When Shotaro and Philip's characters were being written, with the assumption that one of them would be the lead, Tsukata decided to create an age difference between the two. When Masaki Suda was cast as Philip, he had no acting experience at the time, in order to help offset his lack of acting experience, they cast someone with a few years of acting experience to play his partner, Ren Kiriyama. Kiriyama watched Kamen Rider Black as a child. He auditioned so many times to play a Kamen Rider, only to lose out on the role. Kamen Rider Double was going to be his last audition before changing industries. Luckily, his gamble finally paid off. He even helped the set costume designer choose Shotaro's outfits. I really liked the look of Dior's skinny pants, and the costumer told me, Bring me a pair of pants that you like, and I'll base your outfit around them. Then I got a good clothing line to work with. Thus, bringing to life Shotaro's fashionable detective look. Kiriyama and Suda revealed that, during a dinner with director Ryu Tatasaki, if Kamen Rider Double didn't do well, then it would've been the last Kamen Rider series. Thanks to Decades production postponing Kamen Rider Double, the production team were able to create a series that reshaped the franchise. The series turned out to be a real fan favorite, and its legacy continues even today. The writers featured in Kamen Rider Double appear in other series canon and films, like 2011's Kamen Rider Kamen Rider, Forze and O's Movie War Megamax, and more recently, Kamen Rider Revice, The Mystery. On July 3rd, 2017, almost a decade after the show's end, Toei announced a manga sequel to Kamen Rider Double, titled Futo P.I. The series debuted in Weekly Big Comic Spirits on August 7, 2017. Futo P.I. brings Sanjo back as head writer and Tsukada as supervisor, Sanjo was tasked with finding an illustrator for the series. He wanted to find someone who was a fan of the original series and didn't mind illustrating all the gadgets that appeared in the original show. These requirements led him to Masaki Sato, the author of Love Theory. In 2019, producer Taisuke Furuya of the newly formed animation studio, Studio Kai, approached Toei with an anime proposal for Futo P.I. He asked his colleague, animation director Yosuke Kabashima, to create some visuals to present to Toei. Toei was impressed with what they saw, and on April 3rd, 2021, the anime adaptation of Futo P.A. was announced as part of the Kamen Rider franchise's 50th anniversary. The show premiered on Crunchyroll following its Funimation merger as part of its simulcast distribution. And that's all for today's episode. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more content, and don't forget to turn on your notifications, and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see us cover next. Until next time, please take care.